Hello, College Park Academy, high school students, parents, guardians, and families. This presentation is reviewing the Prince George's County Public Schools Student Rights and Responsibilities Handbook. The purpose of this presentation is to share policies, procedures, and best practices to ensure that students and parents understand and support our goal of academic excellence and high quality education for all students. We will share expectations for respectful and responsible behaviors. And we will identify cha changes, responses, and interventions regarding student behavior. It's called rights and responsibilities because we know that all students have a right to a free public education. Students have a right to an environment that is safe, drug-free, free of harassment, accepting of diversity, and conducive to learning where high standards and educational equity are stressed. We want students to enjoy meaningful freedom of speech, press, assembly, and religion. Also to have due process for academic attendance and disciplinary measures. And access to prevention and intervention programs as well. To have these rights, students also have responsibilities to contribute to a community where all students have those rights. It is all of our responsibility to maintain a safe and orderly school environment free of harassment where diversity is, is accepted and conducive to learning, where high standards and educational equity are stressed. Therefore, all students must know and obey all county and school rules and regulations. They should come to school ready to learn on time every day. They should present notes to the school for absences, respect authority and obey all school rules and regulations, and follow instructions from school employees in a positive and respectful manner. We expect that all students will work to their fullest potential academically and in extracurriculars, and they'll seek assistance from adults when there is a problem. We do have a dress code at College Park Academy. Full details on our student dress code can be found on our website. And we encourage students and parents to ask questions if there's anything that they are unclear of. Face masks. Beginning on Tuesday, uh, September 6th, face masks will be optional in all Prince George's County public schools. That means students can choose not to wear one or they may choose to wear one during the school day. This decision is made by the county and is reflecting current uh, recommendations by Prince George's County Health Department. There may be times when this uh, ruling or decision is changed because the reality of our situation with COVID has changed. We will try to keep all parents and students informed. These next couple slides are on student attendance. The most important thing here is that uh, students need to come to school regularly. It's legally required, and it's the only way for students to make sure that they are completing all their work. If there is a reason that a student is absent from school, there are some reasons that are excused. Those are highlighted in blue on this page. I'll draw particular attention to the illness of the student, the second bullet point, okay? Uh, a principal may require a physician's or doctor's note if the absence of, or, of a student for illness is at least three school days. However, uh, because the COVID regulation is five days to stay at home, if a student takes a COVID at home COVID test, there won't need to be a doctor's note if the student stays home for five days, up to five days. However, in yellow there, if the absence reaches six days, a physician's certificate will be required to return to school. The last bullet point here, a mental health day. Our county is generous in providing that one excused absence in each semester. Parents, students, please communicate with each other how, the, how and when this day will be used. Uh, students, take this seriously. This is a great opportunity for you to get a much needed rest or to seek uh, help, guidance, and treatment for something. This is not a day to sleep in and miss school. <laughs> Here are some more uh, covered in blue for reasons that you would have unexcused absences. It's important to know that the only way to guarantee that makeup work will be given full credit is to have an excused absence on file. Uh, a couple more here, suspension, lack of authorized tra transportation, um, health exclusion, and so on. Feel free to pause these slides if you need to and pause this presentation if you need to read further. Technology guidelines. This covers both student use of cell phones, student use of laptops or other internet enabled devices in the classroom, as well as social media use, both in school and out of school time. 
Prince George's County has a technology user agreement as well as technology guidelines that are located in the uh, Students' Rights and Responsibilities Handbook. Some of the most important highlights are that students shall not share their user account information or passwords with others. They shall, should not attempt to bypass security restrictions on internet networks or computer devices. Students shall not use network account for non-school related activities. Students will not copy licensed software, download or copy files without permission. Students will not create ac access or distribute offensive, obscene, bullying, or otherwise inappropriate materials, either through messaging apps, social media, or posting onto message boards. Students shall not capture images or recordings of other students or staff from another device. Students will not use inappropriate screensavers, inappropriate backgrounds, or intentionally damaged technology. Consequences of misuse could include the following. Suspension of of equipment access, confiscation of device, and disciplinary, a disciplinary action. Prince George's County and College Park Academy takes bullying and harassment very seriously. Bullying may take many forms, but it is often seen as continuous teasing or name calling, making a person a victim of jokes, rude or threatened gestures, excluding or rejecting others, spreading hurtful rumors or gossip. Bullying can be done face-to-face -face or through technology, such as emails, mobile devices, instant messaging, defamatory personal websites, polling sites, or a combination of these. Please, if you see something, say something. Students, we think everyone has a responsibility to stop bullying and harassment in the school building. If you see it, please report it to a trusted adult, myself, Mr. Irwin, uh, our guidance counselors in the middle school or the high school, or Mr. Libby or Mr. Baker, our two principals. You can also submit a form on stopbullying.pgcps.org to report um, bullying or harassment. Coping with problems. For assistance with personal problems that may impact your school performance or your personal happiness, okay, please obviously talk to your parents or guardians or a trusted adult, as I just said, in the high school. That would be Ms. Godwin, myself, or Mr. Libby. You can also check out resources on our Prince George's County Mental Health website that is linked there. Students, I encourage you to preview that ahead of time. Share that with your friends when you think your friends might be going through some issues. It's a good website to know. You can also find immediate um, phone numbers there for crisis. This slide talks about social media a little bit. Uh, Obviously, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, Pinterest, and Reddit are all examples of social media, but those are not the only ones. So please, social media is any online platform or presence that allows interactive communication. You must post responsibly. Be mindful of your audience. Uh, in this day and age, anything that is posted on social media that is referencing Prince George's County Public Schools, College Park Academy, or another student in our school is treated as if it is happening in the school day. So even if you post something on a weekend at midnight, that is still, um, you still have to follow Prince George's County rules and procedures. In the next couple of slides, we'll go through the level of offenses that are part of the student code of conduct. They start with one, the lowest level, and they raise to five, the highest level. Once again, there's gonna be a lot of information on these slides. Feel free to pause the presentation and read at your own pace. The first level of response is level one. This usually is a response to minor offenses that generally occur in the classroom and can be corrected by the teacher. Some examples of a level one response in grades three through 12 are as follows. The next level, level two, um, is the next highest level. So these are slightly more serious offensives and therefore the consequences will be a little bit more serious as well. The important thing to note here is that many of this uh, added level of response is trying to bring other folks into the conversation so that we can address the root of these issues. Some examples of a level two violation include these. It's important to know that tobacco use also includes vaping. There is a zero tolerance for those on school property. Level three responses are again, a little bit higher. Well, obviously we'll notify the parent and bring in other uh, school personnel to help with the situation. These can also include a short-term suspension from school. Here are some examples of a level three violation. 
And you'll notice internet computer misuse is listed here. So this would include social media harassment, bullying. Level four responses will, will result in a long-term suspension between four and 10 days. Level four responses uh, usually, uh, I'm sorry, the violations for a level four response are much more serious. You can read some of them here. Level five uh, responses are the most serious. A student may be removed and referred to disciplinary alternative programs or transferred to another PGCPS school. It's important to note that College Park Academy as a public charter school, a level five response will uh, remove that student from College Park Academy. Here are the examples of violations at this level. Obviously distribution of alcohol or drugs, fighting resulting in serious bodily in injuries, threats of mass violence. I'll pause here to discuss threats of mass violence because it's very important to know that anyone referencing a threat against a school or against a group of students, uh, there is no joking with this. So please do not say anything, do not post anything, do not share a meme or a tweet that you think is funny or referencing a joke about a school shooting. Those threats of mass violence are taken very seriously by all levels of law enforcement and they will result in a level five violation. Lastly, if you are suspended, you do have rights, students. So please understand that you have due process. You have the right to make up missed work while on suspension. Your work will be graded. Uh, you will have a readmission con uh, conference. And then if you feel that the suspension was unwarranted, you may appeal it. Again, this is all so that we can have a school environment that we all agree is safe. And that's the, the whole reason behind that is because we have academic goals we want to accomplish. So thank you, everyone. Looking forward to a great school year with you. Again, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. My name is Mr. Irwin. I'm the high school instructional lead teacher.